Here is all the delicious vegan food that I ate in the amazing city of Seoul, South Korea. So in my vegan food guide of Seoul, South Korea, I will actually be moving neighborhood by neighborhood, breaking up the restaurants and foods that way. So let's start off with the food in Myeongdong. Let's start off with Overte, which is actually a vegan cafe that specializes in all vegan donuts. And the donuts here are amazing. The coffees here are ridiculously tasty, definitely sweet, a little bit pricey-ish, but the quality is amazing. The owners or workers here speak great English, which makes it good for tourists like me who doesn't speak that much Korean, to be honest. 안녕하세요, 안녕하세요. I know a little bit, but that's pretty much it, everybody. But anyway, um, they actually have a garlic cream cheese donut, which sounds a little bit adventurous, and it certainly is. Try it out, but their donuts are amazing. Their coffees are amazing. I went here so many times, and you should check it out too. Another place for food that you must check out is the Myeongdong Night Market. This is one of the most famous night markets in all of Seoul, and they have some vegan options for you to check out, including this place where you can get vegan dumplings, which you can see the sign will uh, to let you know they have vegan dumplings as well. Some other things you can eat are going to be like chestnuts or maybe like some like sweet potatoes. You can eat the tornado potato, they call it. And my ultimate recommendation is going to be hotok, which is like a Korean sort of pancake I guess you can call it but inside the pancake is going to be like melted brown sugar because it's like a fried piece of dough with brown sugar inside it is amazing you can have it at different markets or street food throughout Seoul but definitely have it here you will thank me later so good day two in Seoul Korea day two of hotok literally my favorite thing ever it's like an elfin ear and a fried pancake We'll dance for hot dog. <laughs> and my final recommendation from Yongdong is the vegan kitchen. I actually did not check this place out because it opened after I left Seoul. So uh, I'm very sad, but it is an all vegan restaurant that coincidentally was like right down the road from where I was staying on Cartoon Street, a really cool area in Myeongdong. And they have lots of traditional Korean foods such as bibimbap, bulgogi, fried chicken, chapche, and more. Definitely gotta check this place out and let me know if it's good. Their views look like they're good and the vegan traditional Korean food is something I'm always looking for because I don't know about you, but I want to try the actual local foods when visiting a country, not just like Western foods, which we'll get more into in our next neighborhood in Sedong. So my first recommendation for the Insadong Jongno district is going to be Osega Hyung, which I think is probably one of the most popular or most visited vegan restaurants in all of Seoul, and for good reason. It's located in this cool area of Insadong where it's like a network of alleys, and you go to the restaurant, you'll see it's labeled as vegan, so it makes it really easy to find. You take off your shoes, you sit down on the floor, and it's a really fun experience because they serve lots of banchan, no matter what you order. And banchan is the Korean word for like small little side dishes, I guess you can call them. This is gonna include things like pickled vegetables and some other sort of things, which are just nice little fun additions to your meal. But the main courses and main sides you can order are delicious as well. I highly recommend the uh, kimchi mandu. And mandu is like a dumpling in Korean. They're so freaking good. Some of the best dumplings I've had in my entire life. No joke. I also recommend trying out the bulgogi, which is like um, green beef, I guess you can call it, but obviously it's vegan. You can also order sambap, which is one of my favorites, which are these little like lettuce wraps where you pick up like pieces of like vegan or um, like soy meat and dip them and it's just so freaking delicious. You can also order fried chicken here and so much more, including like bunde jjigae, which is like a fermented kind of like tofu with like um, gochujang kind of stew. Really cool. The options here are amazing and I visit this restaurant many times and so should you to try all the delicious food at Osega Hyo. Next is Maru Joyeonsik Gimbap, which is also in Insadong, right off of this busy walking street. And this is like a small kind of casual restaurant where there's a counter you order from and then you sit down to find a table for yourself. They have lots of different options, but they really specialize in the gimbap, which gimbap is like Korean sushi. The flavor profile is a little bit different because they use more like sesame oil. So it's a little bit more savory and less sweet and like vinegary. And it has pickled vegetables inside. So it's a little bit zippy. Um, from the vinegar, from the vegetables. So it's different kind of flavor profile to sushi, if that helps. They also serve fried dumplings, which are a good addition. They serve tteokbokki, which are a really popular Korean street food. 
essentially like rice cakes served in this like spicy gochujang sauce. They're pretty good here. They're a little chewy. I've had better ones in other areas, but I still recommend you try them here. They also have ramyeon, which is like ramen, very similar. They have oden, which is like um, a fish cake in this little broth, which I really didn't like it that much. Maybe you're into this kind of thing, but it wasn't really for me. And they even have a California roll, which I actually really liked, and it's not really Korean, but a delicious addition that you should try too while visiting Maru Gimbap. Next one is definitely not Korean, but it's called Little India in Saddam because I don't know about you, but I love Indian food and it's something I usually like to have in different countries because some places do it better than others. And this is a good vegan option for you to uh, check out in Insadong. They have good curries, they have good paratha, which is like a flatbread, really delicious. And yeah, just a good option if you want something a little bit different than Korean or Western food. And the inside of the restaurant's really nice as well. So it's a good option here in Insadong. Next one is a must do in my opinion, which is to get some uh, tea at a tea house. The one I went to was the traditional tea house in Sedong. It's a beautiful tea house. It's a little bit pricey, not like terrible, but maybe a little bit more than you'd expect to pay for some teas. But they have a nice assortment of like Korean and local teas. And they even give you some Korean snacks, which are vegan uh, if you know which ones to order, which I'm showing you here on screen. Uh, actually, I think they're all vegan, uh, including like this sort of like rice, I wouldn't say it's a cake, but it's like a rice based like chewy kind of stick <laughs> and these cookies Which I don't know the name of them, but they're so freaking delicious and perfectly pair with some tea Whether it's jujube or ginseng or whatever kind of tea you have, but this experience is really cool and you must do it in Sedong And finally is Maji. It's technically not in Sedong, but it's pretty close You can walk from the same station and it's located near the Yongbokgung Palace, which is a really cool thing you must check out. So you can kind of pair these two together in the same day. But Maji is a traditional Korean restaurant where it's more like the Buddhist kind of food. So the flavors are a little bit more simple. Uh, you order like a set meal, which you can split with another person, which includes many different dishes, some like savory pancakes, maybe like a cold mustard noodle soup, which sounds adventurous and it wasn't my favorite, but you might enjoy trying it and some vegetables and tea and that sort of thing. It's a really cool, unique experience to try some different kinds of foods, which, hey, gotta try new foods when traveling. And if they're vegan, that's great for me and you because we're not missing out on those kinds of experiences. Now let's move on to the Hongdae slash Yeonam area, or I just call it the Mapo Gu district. <laughs> My first recommendation here is going to be the Plant Cafe Seoul. This is the Yonam location, and this is like a chain vegan restaurant. There's another one in another location I'll tell you about a little bit more later, but they have mostly like Western cuisine, but some like Asian sort of things and international cuisine as well, including things like burgers, wraps, pastas, sandwiches, and so on. I personally really like the falafel wrap. I thought it was really tasty and filling. This will have a really good like um, Caesar wrap as well, and a Philly cheesesteak, which was surprisingly good. The pasta was good and the burger was good, but I really like the wraps the most here at Plant Cafe. It's a good option for some healthy, but also like international Western foods if you want something besides just Korean food uh, throughout your trip here in Korea. Next is the vegan bakery Heimil. Now this is an all vegan bakery, which I love these kinds of places so much when traveling. It's a perfect place to start the day because they also offer like vegan milks for your coffees and it includes some like savory and sweet treats kind of Asian style bakery, so some things might be a little bit different for me and you, like some like hot dog bread kind of things that are like weirdly sweet or something like that, but um, the owner is really nice and friendly as well, so it's a great place to visit. I cannot recommend it enough. And another place for some sweet treats is going to be Honey Cookie Yonam, which despite the name, they actually have vegan cookies without honey as well, I believe. Um, at least they're marketed as vegan, so I guess if you're curious, you could like show them a little message on uh, like Google Translate just to confirm, but they have some vegan cookies here as well and kind of like a self-service style bakery, which I really enjoy these kinds of places. So check it out if you want some cookies as well. And now let's move on from the Hongdae area to Guangzhang Market, which I'm gonna talk about just as its own separate entity because this is like my favorite food place in all of Seoul because the atmosphere is so great. It's becoming a little bit touristy. Some people say maybe it's not the perfectly authentic market, but I think it has a really unique 
uh, energetic feel, and it's like definitely lots of Koreans that are still making up the majority of the people at the market. But anyway, you can try some amazing vegan foods here, such as bindetok, which is like the main food I would recommend. It's like a mung bean pancake. To me, it just tastes like a giant hash brown. They don't use eggs, they just use like mung bean. Uh, and like grind it up into like a flour, and it's really freaking good. <laughs> You can also try things such as habakchok, which is like a pumpkin porridge. It's really nice and hearty, better for a cool day. You can try chapche, which is usually vegan. And the place I ultimately recommend, I think it's called Mother and Daughter Gimap. It should say 1975. Here's a picture. It'll be easier just to know like the logo or the sign on the store. And here we tried Binday Tok. We tried some tofu skin kind of sushi, which is really tasty as well. It's also, they also have pokpoki, which we talked about earlier, those rice cakes, which were really freaking delicious. They also have vegan gimbap and of course, got to down it with a nice Korean beer. I don't know why, but it's just really nice <laughs> and adds a good experience. Now let's move on to a place called Rooted Seoul. This is actually located a bit further away from these other areas in uh, an area near Olympic Park. So if you're checking out Olympic Park, which we did, this is a good place to eat at while you're in the area. Now this is an all vegan sort of like cafe restaurant, it has a really cute design, really like charming sort of feel. I can't put my finger on it. But the menu here is mostly like sandwiches or kind of like Western Mediterranean style menu where they have like lots of like hummus or um, like baba ganoush kinds of things. I really enjoyed their sandwiches. They were really delicious and they have like soups and salads for you to eat. Some more like lighter food but really tasty and flavorful as well. Definitely would check it out if I was in the area. Now let's move on to the Gangnam area which is just a little bit west but still south of the Han River. My first recommendation is going to be a Loving Hut, which is similar to Plant Cafe Seoul. This is actually like a chain of restaurants, but I think it's more widespread. And they also have like Western, but Asian or like Korean sort of food. The thing that I ultimately recommend you eat here is the vegan burgers. Oh my God, this is like one of the best vegan burgers I've ever had while traveling. It was so delicious and like hearty and juicy and rich in flavor. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it right now, to be honest. So this is my recommendation for you, but they have more stuff for you to check out and try here, but it's a good option nonetheless. But the next recommendation I think is even better, which is Dear Dahlia. I'm giving you a confused face because if you type it in, you'll see that it's a cosmetic store, but on the second floor, they actually have a cafe. And if you like reserve and book this, you can do a all vegan afternoon tea, which maybe it's not perfectly Korean, but they have their own like spin on it and afternoon tea. It's like the ultimate way to treat yourself because they give you like a three tiered little um, tray, I guess you can call it. And it has like finger sandwiches, fruits, some savory treats. They give you like unlimited tea and little treats for you on top in a beautiful setting. It's a really great way to treat yourself for a special occasion or just to have a really fun experience. But anyway, this is a really good vegan food experience that I recommend you have in Seoul. And pro tip, you need to book this with the Naver app. You can download it on the app store. And um, if you sign up and make an account, then you can be, should be able to message them and book your time. Now let's move on to the final area, Itaewon slash Heibongchong, kind of like this Yongsan district. So similar to Yonam, they also have a plant cafe here in Itaewon, and the menu is very similar, same foods. They have maybe a couple different um, like menu options on in each different branch, but still same things applies. Really recommend it. But what they do have in Itaewon is Pan Onesta, which, or Pan Onesta. And this is an all vegan dessert shop and they have great like little cookies or cakes or treats. But the main thing that you must try here is Bingsu, which if you don't know, Bingsu is like a Korean shaved ice, but it's different than like a snow cone. The ice here, it's like very soft. It like melts on the tip of your tongue. It's literally like you're eating snow, but not yellow snow, aha. Uh -huh. Cringy joke, but anyway. Um, it's all vegan here because they use oat milk and they are so big, it's like the size of your head and it's a really delicious treat, especially on a hot day. But even not on a hot day, you must try it here at Pan And in the Heibongchon district or neighborhood, you should try Vegetas. This is a really like cozy, but um, so it doesn't feel like depressingly cozy uh, restaurant that has like Western, international, and Asian food, mostly kind of like paninis and sandwiches and some like pasta sort of dishes. I tried the lasagna and I really would not recommend it. They use like tofu skin instead of a noodle and it gives like a really weird texture. If you're into that sort of thing, go for it, but I would really recommend 
their um, paninis, those are really good. The nachos were fine as well. I definitely need to try more things on their menu, but it's a really popular vegan option. So let me know what you think about this one, but I would stick with the paninis if you're a little skeptical. But located right across the street is a place called Monk's Deli. And it breaks my heart, but it's listed online as being closed. So hopefully it reopens, but this has some of the best food I've ever had in my entire life. So what they have here, similar to other restaurants, is a mixture of like Western, international, Asian slash Korean cuisine. And it is freaking amazing. I really recommend you check out the tofu chicken burger. It's like a chicken burger, but they use tofu for the patty and the texture and the flavor is just so good. It's ridiculous. They also have orange chicken, which I'm gonna be totally honest with you. This is something I usually would never order at a restaurant when having other options, but their orange chicken is on another level. It's the best orange chicken I've ever had in my life. Perfectly balances like that sweetness and like the sourness of the citrusy flavors that make orange chicken the dish that it is, but it's done to perfection, guys. It's so good. They also have a spicy red curry, which I'm a big curry um, fan, I guess you can call it. And it is like perfect spice level, perfect spiciness, so rich with flavor. Oh, it's so freaking good. But this isn't even my favorite dish yet, guys. My favorite dish at this uh, restaurant is going to be the Korean creamy pasta. Just look at this, guys. You can just see the flavor like jumping at you from the screen. It is just like a mouth gasm. I'm sorry if that's a little bit too PG-13, but it is so freaking delicious like one of my favorite pasta dishes I've ever had in my life, and I've been to Italy, guys. It's pretty hard to compare, but it is ridiculously good. And finally, in this area, there's actually a bakery called Sunny Bread that I visited in a different neighborhood in the Songsu district, but it relocated to uh, Haibang Chong, so check it out if you want. It's a good place to, again, go for like a breakfast because they have good vegan coffees. They have some vegan baked goods, and I really liked the vibe and the setting of the one in the different neighborhood. So visit this one and let me know what you think, but it's a good option in this area for coffee and some baked goods. So what do you guys think? Is this a good vegan list for Seoul, South Korea? Which of these look the most delicious for you? Are you more excited to try like Korean foods that are vegan or some of these other options? Let me know down in the comments below. And again, this was neighborhood by neighborhood, but I've actually made an entire neighborhood guide for Seoul, including things to do and talking more about the vibes and which neighborhood might resonate with you the most. So check that out if you're interested and subscribe for more Korea content, more vegan travel content and all that sort of thing. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.